Hey there, I'm Angelo Atzeris, President and CEO of Leverage Lending Group, and this is Three Points. First point, banking turmoil moderates the Fed rate hike. So the Federal Reserve made its ninth consecutive rate hike last March by raising the federal funds rate by 25 basis points. However, the prospect for future rate hikes seems somewhat diminished. So basically in the near future, Fed Chairman Powell came out and talked about economic data and pointed out even larger rate hikes in the future, but those rate hikes were tempered by the Silicon Valley bank situation. And you know, the FOMC even considered pausing the rate hikes, but instead they raised it at 25 basis points. So what does this mean? How is it impacting you? And really what's going on with these banks, right? So understanding the Silicon Valley banking, you know, basically they're gone, right? Like these are very, very big banks, big companies, big institutions that really, that are really struggling in this market. So understanding with volatility, with rates, with things happening in the market, this all impacts our rates. It impacts mortgage rates, maybe not directly, but indirectly. And so we've seen rates kind of fluctuate up and down and in the last couple of weeks. And so understanding how this happens going forward. So obviously the Fed still looks you know, like understanding the CPI, understanding inflation data to remember whether rates are gonna go up, but see rates kind of fluctuating a little bit up and down. Well, all this stuff has to calm down. And when things do calm down, we expect it still to be the same policy we, we've expected before where rates are gonna be between six and seven, seven point, you know, seven and a half percent for the next couple months or really through the end of this year. Second point, FHA delays a DTI fee adjustment. So the FHFA is delayed all the way back to August 1st, 2023, instead of May 1st. So this quarter of 3 8 adjustment on pricing is delayed for all DTIs over 40%. So why they delay it? They got a lot of pushback from the industry saying that administratively, it's very hard to implement a debt to income ratio change. And they didn't stop it, they just delayed it. So it's helping the industry, but it didn't really solve the problem because it's not right for consumers either, right? So consumer thinks they make 60,000 a year or 5,000 a month. And the underwriter might calculate it at, let's say $4,800 a month. All of a sudden they're gonna get charged a quarter point or three eighths more because their income hasn't been continuous or something of that nature. And there's a lot of nuance. Is that the right thing to do to the consumers? And everybody interprets income differently, a little bit different. So it's not like the LTV where it's black and white, where it's 75% LTV, and this is a 745 credit score. It's very simple and black and white. Everybody understands it. So debt to income ratio adjustments, you know, they've seen it in the MI world a little bit. It's really not a great way to help consumers or to adjust pricing to, to, to hurt them. So it's gonna be complicated. We'll see how it goes, but right now, thanks to the FHFA that they didn't implement it. It's not now until August, so you want, may, may not see it on rate sheets until the middle of May or end of, knowing that the loans may be delivered by July 31st. You're not gonna get adjustments after the first adjustment will be charged. Third point, timeline to sunset the FICO Classic model. So FHFA also announced uh, implementation guidelines for or the use of the FICO 10T, the Vantage 4.0 credit score model. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, the GSEs also plan a transition from two rather than three credit reports from the national consumer agencies within a year. So a buy merge instead of a try merge? Those timelines are simple, second quarter this year, but that's right now. They're planning on getting some feedback right and understand that by the end of the first quarter of next year, 2024, you could go to a buy merge instead of a try merge. So FHA would begin delivering, disclosing FCO 10T and Vantage 4.0 historical data. And you know, it basically updates by 2025 in the fourth quarter of 2025. So basically they really hope to implement uh, that. And, and but what does that really mean? Should you, should you think it should be cheaper because it's two bureaus instead of three bureaus and they have a new scoring model that's competing? Nobody really knows what's going on with that. And if this stuff really matters because the credit report stores go up and as the price has gone up, significantly, the credit reports have gone up, as I meant to say, have gone up significantly. Is it really making us better? Is it really impacting consumers, helping consumers, making buying a home easier? It's, we're not really sure right now. There's a lot of timelines, a lot of years to figure this stuff out. And there's really, nobody really knows what's gonna be happening. And so are they gonna support accuracy and innovation and inclusion? Like, well, we're all gonna figure it out together as a team, I, I guess, right? But 
But now the way that I look at it is that there's a lot of complexities being added and not a lot of benefits to the consumer. So we'll see if this change evolves over time. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Angela Tseris, President and CEO of Leverage Lending Group, and that's three points.